The University of Maine Museum of Art presents Studio Sessions, a virtual hands-on art-making lesson with senior museum educator Kat Johnson. Hello and welcome. My name is Kat, and I'll be walking you through today's lesson of Studio Sessions, coffee and tea ink painting in the Sumi E style. Through this process, we will use everyday household items to create a unique piece of art. We will begin with a brief history on Sumi E and its techniques, go over the materials list, and then walk through the lesson step by step together to create a finished ink painting using strongly brewed coffee and tea. Feel free to pause the video at any time to prepare your materials, set up your workstation, or stretch your legs. So what do you say? Let's make some art! Sui Boku Ga, commonly referred to in the art world as Sumi-i, is a Japanese technique first developed in China during the Song Dynasty, and was taken to Japan by Zen Buddhist monks in the mid-14th century. This 2,000-year-old art form of brush painting was first used as a means to deepen the monk's meditation practice. The monks adhered to a rigorous schedule in preparation of the painting, and each step of the process, from preparing the ink stone, grinding the sumi ink, loading the brush, and releasing it onto the paper, was part of the deep contemplation and mindfulness. The subjects of the work varied from landscape to still life, but each painting was created not simply to reproduce the appearance, but to capture its spirit. Quote, to paint a flower, there is no need to perfectly match the petals and colors, but it's essential to convey its liveliness and fragrance. For this lesson, you will need strongly brewed coffee or tea, cooled to room temperature. I've brewed several different types and strengths to achieve different tones and shades. A paintbrush. Here I have a more traditional Sumi E ink brush, but you can use any paintbrush you may have at home, such as my studio brushes here, or you could even use a house paintbrush if that is what you have. Paper. Any kind will do, but if you have some that are more absorbent, such as watercolor paper, that's best. The coffee and tea are really watery, so the thicker the paper, the better. A rag or towel to dry your brush between washes. And water to clean your brush between colors or usage. Take a moment to gather the items you need to join in on the art making. All right, let's get started. I'm going to use my begonia as the inspiration for this work of art. It has a lot of beautiful leaves that drape over the edge of the pot, and as I create my Sumi-e inspired painting, I'm not focusing on creating a perfect representation of the plant, but rather aiming to capture its essence or spirit. I'm going to get started by testing each of the teas. You can do this by making small strokes along the bottom edge of your paper. This first one is the green tea, and it's so light you can almost barely see it, but if you add more of the ink to the wet brush stroke, you can deepen the color. Always be sure to wash your brush when you switch between colors. This is an English breakfast tea, and it's a beautiful orangey brown. Now these inks are much lighter than the deep black of traditional Sumi-e ink, but it's a lovely result nonetheless. I really like this one. Clean off your brush. This water was clear earlier, but this is not my first attempt. It's good to take your time and to try things more than once. Now let's try the coffee. You would think that this would be the darkest, but as you can see, the tea appears to be the stronger of the two. So even though it appears to be a lighter brown than the coffee, the opacity of the tea makes the ink appear darker on the page. So I'll use this tea for my painting. Don't worry about our test marks down here. You can always trim this bit off the page when it's fully dried, but it's a good practice to test out your materials before you get started. To begin the painting, look back to your subject. I wanna focus on the circular scalloped shape of the leaf. 
and also the directional line of the stems, how they jut upward, reaching toward the light, as well as the curve of the pot's edge. Begin by loading your brush with the ink. Be sure to dab the tip on the edge of the container before proceeding so as not to drip on your paper. Beginning in the center of your paper, start with the outline of a single leaf. Notice how quick and light my strokes are. You want to use a light and quick hand while creating your Sumi E style work. Each pass I take, I look back at the subject and then with the shape in mind, create a quick outline of the leaf. Remember, we're trying to capture the spirit of the leaf. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll add the veins of the leaf in a similar way with a quick energized motion and continue with the stems in the same way. Use the direction of the line to guide your hand. You can practice by moving the brush in sweeping motions to get started before putting the brush to the paper. Try to convey the direction and energy of the stem. Finish the plant by adding a leaf to the end of each stem. Notice how fast that was? The image really comes together quickly. Now we'll add the pot. Using directional sweeping motions, create the edges. I want to add some depth by coloring the soil. Just as we did on our test strokes at the bottom, you can go back into a wet area with more ink to deepen the pigment. So once you figure out where you want the dark areas to be, come back to it with more of the tea ink. Remember, Sumi-e painting was traditionally tied to a meditation practice. Therefore, try to stay attentive to the work. Enjoy the calm, contemplative experience of creating this image. All right, I think that looks good. I even enjoy the dots that popped up organically as the ink splashed on the paper. Just a few more finishing touches. And take care to wash your brush really well, as it's important to take good care of your materials. Now let's try a very different brush and ink to see the results. This brush is much rougher than the one I was just using, and the bristles have a very different edge, so let's play with that a bit. I want to add some variation in color, so I'll try out my very light green tea to see what happens. It might be hard to see here, but this adds a lovely light yellow color to the painting. In just a moment, I'll show you the dried version where you'll be able to see this yellow color. Great. You'll notice my paper is starting to curl a little at the top. That's from the moisture. Let the work dry flat. Once fully dried, you can lightly coat the back of the paper with a wash of water, place it between two hard surfaces, I used cardboard and a pane of glass, and weight the top to flatten the work. Again, let it dry fully. Here's the painting fully dried. I think it's a lovely expression of the spirit of the plant, and I'm sure yours is as well. While you have your supplies out, I encourage you to continue painting other subjects in this style. You could have a family member sit for a portrait, or create a work based off of a pet. Or you could put together your own arrangement of objects for a still life all your own. Remember, whatever you're painting in the Sumi E style, be sure to focus on the essence or spirit of the piece, and I'm sure your work will come out great. 
For more information on all of the educational offerings at UMMA, please visit our website, umma.umaine.edu. Thank you for watching this video from the University of Maine Museum of Art, Maine's Museum for Modern and Contemporary Art.